the obstacles in bringing Spinning Gold to the, to the screen weren't so much in, in whose story was to tell because um, what we always thought was special was the stories that people didn't know, but we knew them as, as, as the family and as the son who lived it. Um, we grew up with these artists, not as artists, but as family. Uh, Donna Summer was my aunt, Gene Simmons was my uncle. I played the little cowboy in the village people. It was such an intimate knowledge of what happened um, that I felt I specifically had a very unique insight into not just what happened, but what was special about what happened. Um, the mission was always to do a love letter to these incredible artists and these incredible moments in, in music history. Um, and so I, I felt that, that the telling of the story wasn't the obstacle. The obstacle was to try to make it the way I thought it should be made, which is a very hard thing to do unless you do it completely independently. And that was the choice. Well, if it's funny because uh, when Tim came to me, he said, you know, I saw this video of you performing and I f saw the essence of my father in your sort of performance on stage, um, which is always, was already like a little bit of a facade for me because I like put it on. And uh, so I had to tap into that. And then honestly, uh, reading the script and seeing like videos and interviews with uh, Neil Bogart and then experiencing being in the room with Tim as a director, both sort of dually influenced me. So I'd find myself, you know, trying to work on the character and then Tim would come up to me with this crazy, not crazy, but like with this crazy. wild energy that he has when he's on set. And I was like, oh, that's, that's Neil right there. I could see him like in here in the way you're talking and the way you're like super intense. And so I, I got a lot of my inspiration for the character from, from you actually. And, and in terms of finding Mr. Jordan here, I cast this film entirely opposite of the way one normally would, a, a film about my father, you'd think I'd start there. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out who that person should be, so I was, for all the obvious reasons, uh, not just because he was my father, but because he's such a unique character. Yeah. Um, his magnetism was extraordinary, uh, but the grounding certainty of his convictions was extraordinary. I was able to cast every other person around, and we were getting ready to start production, and I still hadn't figured out who he was going to be. And I remember calling my, my producing partner, Larry Mark, uh, who has such extraordinary um, experience and knowledge in the musical theater world, and I said, who is the greatest, who is the greatest male Broadway star right now who can just capture that audience for two and a half hours? And he said, Jeremy Jordan. Oh, wow. I went home. I spent about a four hour dive down YouTube, got on a red eye the next night to New York, even before we had contacted his representatives, got to New York, said, I'm here, can we have dinner? We had dinner, we then arranged a, a secret read through of the whole script and uh, greatest creative decision I ever made in my life. I mean, this it just further highlights the fact, uh, if you have seen the film, his, his father is just tenacious in his conviction of what he thinks is going to hit and what he thinks is, is right and his like sort of vibe about things and Tim is very much the exact same way, <laughs> will not stop. Gladys, uh, I just studied all her older interviews um, and seen her really passionate about imagery and business wise, I saw her talk about business. Uh, and I learned more about her doing this film <laughs> through Tim and his direction and reading the script. And uh, that was cool. But also, I wanted to make sure Tim is very particular about the music, which I loved. Most directors, you know, they just, the music is going to come. But he was very particular about that part. Uh, the acting was very natural. It was about our chemistry. And, um, but finding Gladys, she was very focused on, on business. And I didn't know that. I've only known her as a vocalist. So I was trying to make sure I had some of her phrasing, but also emote some of myself as well. But I wasn't focused on, I gotta be exactly like her. There's only one Gladys. That's it. So honestly, but like what he was mentioning with his brother, Evan Bogart, we had known each other since I was about 20 years old. So almost 10 years um, that his brother has been seeing me grow up and they had seen me in other acting roles. And, and they didn't know because I've taken a kind of step back from on screen things. I've just been doing voiceover and music. 
Um, and so they didn't know whether I would be interested in acting. They were kind of asking me, like, I don't, I don't know if this is your thing right now. And when they mentioned, obviously, the role um, and just the other amazing people involved in it, it was, it was mainly just about saying, okay, let me prepare for it and let me see if I'm going to do it justice. And once I, once I was able to be confident in that ability to just pull that off because this is such an incredible um, person, you know, to be playing. Like he said, I'm sure there's been plenty of people to, that wanted to play Donna over the years. Then it was just more of a thing of saying, okay, we're doing this, we're doing it together, we're doing it right, well, let's go.